So the three, three ways to find y, one is to draw a slope field, pick a point, draw a line. The second is what we're going to do tomorrow called Euler's method. It's the easiest equation you'll see, but it's the most annoying technique that you'll ever do. It's, it, you have to keep doing over and over and over, lots of bookkeeping, but the formula is as easy as slope. And then there are the techniques. And we're going to start with the basic one today, separation of variables. You'll love it. You'll feel empowered. You'll think you're back in uh, HL1, and it goes great. And then we'll do two more that get a little tougher, and we'll do those on the next couple days. But we'll start with separation of variables, and uh, th this is always kind of fun. You're going to try to solve for X is on one side, Y is on another. And this first example is kind of basic. I'm going to flip this DX. Really, this is one unit. And my professor has told me this is a unit called the slope with respect to X. You really can't split these, but we do for this technique. So you'd say DY equals X cubed plus 3 DX. It's called separating the variable. And then, what do you think I'm going to do next to solve for y? Integral, yeah. So the integral of dy is y, so you get y equals x to the fourth over 4 plus 3x plus c. Now that c is dependent on what point. This would make a whole family of slope fields. We're going to pick one point, the point x, y, 2, 1. So y is 1, x is 2, plus 3 times 2, plus c. So you're going to get 1 minus 16 fourths is 4, minus 6 is c, 1 minus 10 is negative 9. So my equation is going to be x to the fourth over 4 plus 3x minus 9. That is the coveted y equal formula. And you did it using simple separation of variables. Have you done that? Did you do that last year? No? Okay. Well, you're doing it now. And you're going to do great with it. You probably did some introductory ones last year. Okay. So now the next thing we're going to do is throw y into the mix. Now when I throw y into the mix, we're not going to be quite as quick to separate. I'm going to put the dx here, but because this is a y plus 3, I'm going to take the y plus 3 and put it below the dy and move the dx to this side. Might be counterintuitive, but uh, it'll work. So now separation of variables means on this side are y's, on this side are x's. So then you take the integral of both sides. What's the integral of dx? Hmm? dx is x plus c. What's the integral of dy over y plus 3? Now the derivative of this is 1, so you can just call it the natural log of y plus 3. Okay. Now, here's something I just want to get firmly in your brain. Is we can put that c anywhere we want. We could put it on the left side. We could put it on the right side. We can put it on both sides. You know, when you get this integral, you get a plus c. This integral, you have a plus c. But it's still a constant. And so we have the choice to make it easy for yourselves or hard on yourself. What do you want to do? Easy or hard? Easy? Good choice. So let's choose right now all to agree on this. Hold up your right hand, please. Okay, I, name here, promise using my right hand to always put the C on the right hand side. Okay, you promise? Okay. It doesn't matter, but we're just all going to do the same thing. Okay, so there you go. And now you can take this point which is x, y, and we're going to put the y is negative 2, and x is 4, 
So you're going to get the natural log of negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 4 plus C. Well, this is just, what's the natural log of 1? I love it. 0. Good. So C is negative 4. So my answer is not the natural log of Y plus 3 equal to uh, X minus 4. Why is it not that? I haven't solved for Y yet. We can do it. Log base E. What's our next step? Secret to log. Do you remember that, Zach? Secret to log. What's the base of this expression? Base what? Log base E of Y plus 3 equals X minus 4. What's the base? E, you got it. And then this is the exponent. Logs are exponents. So this is the exponent. This is the base. So we're going to have e to the x minus 4 equal to y plus 3. And now it's easy. You're just going to get e to the x minus 4 minus 3. And that's your favorite function. Now wouldn't it be cool if this answer actually made sense? Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, question. So u is, great question, du is just dy. And so I had the dy to drop out. Excellent. I'm glad you mentioned that. All right, so uh, let's, let's get something cool coming out of here. So what we're saying here is that dy dx is equal to y plus 3. Here I'm saying y is e to the x minus 4 minus 3. What is dy dx of this answer? Get ready to get a math tingle up your spine. This is, this is going to be crazy. What's the derivative of negative 3? 0. What's the derivative of e to the x minus 4? e to the x minus 4. Now, we're saying here that dy dx of this function is e to the x minus 4. So is e to the x minus 4 equal to y, which is e to the x minus 4 minus 3 plus 3? Is that a true statement? Come on, that's amazing, right? Huh? These cancel out. E to the x minus 4 equals e to the x minus 4. That's the only function that will work that exists that makes this true. And something as simple as this has a y that has an e to the x minus 4. Do you see why e to the x, uh, the base e, is so important, not only in, in biology, but in mathematics? Is when you start putting it with uh, differential equations, you get E all the time. All the time. This is the answer. Because if you took the derivative of this, E to the x minus 4 minus 3, you get this, which plus 3 gives you the dy dx. That's amazing. That's incredible. 